the big boy stuff. So we're going to see if it plays out. Uh, but, but I'm telling you, here's where the Herminator opinion comes in. I've seen this movie before. It don't play out real good. NASCAR fans, you won't believe the kind of drama that's revving up off the track. Ever thought you'd see Michael Jordan going toe-to-toe -to -toe with NASCAR? Michael Jordan's 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports just dropped a bombshell lawsuit on NASCAR, and it's got everyone in the garage talking. We're talking millions at stake, new charters, and some serious stuff. But here's the real question. Could this be the fight that shakes up the entire sport? Will teams finally get a fair share of the pie? Or is this a dangerous game that could leave Jordan and his squad on the sidelines in 2025? But here's the kicker. What happens if MJ and his team win this lawsuit? Could we see NASCAR lose millions and completely change how they operate? There's a lot at stake, folks, and we're here to break it all down. So buckle up, because 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports are suing NASCAR in what might be the biggest legal fight the sport's ever seen. If you're as hyped about this drama as we are, smash that like button, drop your thoughts in the comments, and let's get into it. All right, let's break it down. Michael Jordan, AKA His Airness, owns 2311 Racing with Denny Hamlin. These guys aren't just playing the game, they're changing it. They've got Tyler Reddick and Bubba Wallace repping the team, and in 2025, they're planning to add a third car to their lineup. Yeah, they're thinking big. On the other side, we've got Front Row Motorsports. Bob Jenkins, the dude who runs Front Row, has been grinding for years. His drivers? Michael McDowell and Todd Gilliland. Now, why are these guys suing NASCAR? It all boils down to charters. And no, we're not talking about school charters. These are NASCAR's version of a franchise system. A charter guarantees a spot in every race and brings in serious cash. NASCAR gave out 36 charters back in 2016, and now they're worth big bucks. Spire Motorsports just dropped nearly $40 million for one last year. Insane, right? So here's where things get messy. NASCAR wants teams to sign a new charter agreement for 2025 and beyond. The big issue? The deal blocks teams from suing NASCAR, especially over antitrust claims. And guess what? That's exactly what 2311 and Front Row are doing. Their lawsuit, filed in federal court in North Carolina, says NASCAR's been playing Monopoly with stock car racing. They claim NASCAR's family, the France family, has been making millions by controlling the sport and squeezing teams into unfair deals. They also say NASCAR's contracts with tracks and suppliers are limiting teams' ability to make money and grow. Michael Jordan himself came out swinging, saying, everyone knows I'm a fierce competitor, but the way NASCAR is run today is unfair to teams, drivers, sponsors, and fans. And MJ isn't just talking. He's backing it up with legal action, baby. If you're as hyped as we are about the NASCAR playoffs, make sure to drop your predictions in the comments, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell for the latest NASCAR news and driver stories. All right, let's talk stakes, because this is more than just some courtroom drama. If 2311 and Front Row lose this fight, they might not even race in 2025. Yeah, you heard that right. A chartered team brings in three times more money than an unchartered team. So if NASCAR blocks them from getting a charter, they could be seriously screwed. But MJ and Front Row are playing the long game. They've both locked down charters from Stuart Haas Racing for 2025, pending NASCAR's approval. The big point of debate over this charter dispute is how NASCAR operates the sport financially. Although the charters allow the teams to draw from the revenue purse, it hasn't resulted in sustainable business prospects for the team. Rather, they still heavily rely on the sponsorship money to help them mitigate the cost of running the race teams. This has led to many teams taking the exit route, Stuart Haas Racing being the most recent example of that. And NASCAR doesn't want to make this easy for them. They're going to fight this tooth and nail. With all this drama off the track, you'd think the drivers would be distracted, right? Nah, they're professionals, but they're definitely talking. Denny Hamlin, co-owner of 2311, was asked how his team is handling all the noise. He said the vibe in the garage has been positive. My Jordan, he sent me an awesome clip from uh, the Moneyball where uh, I think John Henry's saying, you know, the first one through the wall always gets bloody. You know, in the end, it's because you're threatening people's jobs and things like that. I just hope that it's not seen that way. Just seeing that, you know, this is certainly an opportunity for us to try to uh, promote change in the sport that's positive for everyone. And that's teams, drivers, fans, everyone. I feel like uh, certainly on our end, good for me because this, you know, this is not like we just decided one day we woke up and this is going to happen. This has been on the plate for a while. It allows me actually more relief, focus on the 11 car and, you know, everything I've got to do there because it's out and it's done and now there's other people able to speak upon it. Michael McDowell from Front Row Motorsports echoed similar thoughts, saying no concerns on it impacting performance. But he dropped a little bomb too, admitting he got a memo about what not to talk about. Yeah, 
impact. NASCAR's watching closely, Tyler Reddick, one of 2311's top drivers, kept it cool. He's staying laser focused on his racing, saying he doesn't feel like a target. But let's be real, the garage is buzzing with this news. Even Alex Bowman joked that it's been a wild week for reading. And Joey Logano? He's like, I know what you know, but I'm focused on my championship. Savage. Meanwhile, Kyle Larson's reaction to the antitrust lawsuit filed by 2311 Racing and FRM against NASCAR was, We're probably one of the sports where athlete salaries have gone down in the last couple of decades. Hendrick Motorsports is among the 13 teams to have signed the new charter deal, in a controversial setting. But it seems like the stand taken by the two teams has opened a dialogue where teams and drivers are airing out their concerns. While while Denny Hamlin is at odds with his rival on the racetrack, he agrees with his opinion. Moreover, the co-owner of 2311 Racing also predicted the detrimental outcomes if NASCAR doesn't bring about systemic change to the business aspect of the sport. Kyle Larson's right, William Byron's right, Michael McDowell's right, and why the drivers should care is because when the teams are healthy, we are going to pay more for their services. That's just normal protocol. Driver salaries have gone down, and I know that DBC talks about this. Team mechanics, their salaries have gone down. Crew chiefs have gone down. Everyone in our sport has gone down except for one party and that's the party that's on the other end of this lawsuit everyone should care because the teams are the ones that has shouldered the burden of our revenue going down and down and down over time and so what's happened is you know your drivers are typically one of your biggest ticket items right of things that you have to pay you pay the drivers which you can afford to pay them so, what happens if 2311 and Front Row win? NASCAR's entire business model could get flipped upside down. The France family has run NASCAR for decades, but this lawsuit could force them to loosen their grip on the sport. Jeffrey Kessler, the lawyer repping the teams, said, We will be able to follow the money. We will be able to see exactly how exploitative this system has been. Right now, teams only get 25% of the TV revenue, while NASCAR and the tracks take the rest. The teams argue they should get more, especially since they're the ones paying for drivers, crew, and cars. If 2311 and Front Row win, other teams will come knocking for a better deal, and NASCAR might have to shell out millions. Kenny Wallace, a former NASCAR driver, put it bluntly. You're 2311, you're front row. You just took NASCAR to court. By the way, you're like, okay, listen, NASCAR, we're suing you. We want more money. And by the way, you're going to let us keep racing in your series. <laughs> That's big boy stuff. We're going to see if it plays out. But I'm telling you, here's where the Herminator opinion comes in. I've seen this movie before. It don't play out real good. So they've got experience fighting off challenges like this. But times are different now. And with MJ involved, this battle's got some serious star power behind it. So what's next for 2311 and Front Row? Well, they're still full speed ahead on their plans to expand in 2025. They've already locked in charters with Stuart Haas Racing, and they're preparing to roll out with three cars next season, whether NASCAR likes it or not. But first, they'll be in court fighting for their right to compete. If the federal court grants them an injunction, they'll be able to race as chartered teams while the lawsuit plays out. If not, things could get tricky. All right, race fans, that's all for now. This legal showdown is far from over, and it's going to be a wild ride to the finish line. But we want to hear from you now. What do you think will happen next? Will 2311 and Front Row Motorsports take down NASCAR's monopoly? Or will the France family come out on top once again? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and let's get this discussion rolling. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for more interesting stories and updates from everything NASCAR. Do share this video with your friends. Until next time, keep the conversation going on Lucky Dog on Track.